Right, welcome to uh, London Learning Lean. Uh, next week, we've got uh, Jason Kexin Ying, who's going to tell us about uh, his work on martingales. But today, I'm very pleased. Hi, uh, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Nico Cavalleri, who is going to tell us about topological vector bundles. Okay, so should I start, or is someone entering the room right now? Oh yeah, please yeah, please start yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, as, as thank you, Kevin, for the invitation. And yes, uh, so I'm Nicolò Cavalleri, and I am a PhD, first year PhD student at the London School of Geometry and Number Theory. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, topological vector bundles in Lean. So this is not meant to be uh, a very advanced talk, like there, I guess there were some more advanced talks before. Uh, so I will start from the basics and I will start by uh, introducing in general uh, some facts about how topology is done in Lean. So we'll go over uh, topological spaces, filters, continuous function, homomorphism and local homomorphisms very briefly, but, but uh, I will give an introduction. And then uh, I will move on uh, to talk about the problems that are related to formalizing topological vector bundles. And uh, I will mention again fiber bundles, but then I will move to vector bundles, sections of vector bundles, and construction for and on vector bundles. So uh, I will, uh, uh, I, I meant this talk to be. Um, kind of basic, but still I will kind of assume familiarity with the mathematical content uh, of the objects that I mentioned, which should be, uh, I mean, like master, like first year master level mathematics and, uh, or even third year undergrads and, uh, and some, familiar, so some familiarity with the lean language too. So, okay, let's start with topology. Um, so like, Obviously, the first uh, definition we want to talk about in topology is that of a topological space. And uh, uh, this definition in Lean is in MathLib is uh, kind of straightforward. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, it's not very uh, different from how one would um, uh, say it in a standard mathematics. So we have uh, a class topological space uh, for which um, we we have uh, a predicate is open, which tells us if uh, a given set of a topological space is open or not. And then we have the standard axiom of a topological space, so that the total set, the universal set is open, and that the intersection of two open sets is open, and arbitrary union is open. Um, so, uh, like, Right after the definition of topological space, we can define the predicate is closed and the function interior closed and and function and 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 like prove the basic properties about uh, about them, and uh, and then we can also define what a, a continuous function is, and this is also quite uh, standard, as in like there is no uh, difference from the definition of continuous function in uh, standard topologic topology textbooks. Uh, so yeah, we just require that the pre-image of open set is open. But uh, so like after the definition of continuous function, things become a bit different from uh, the standard presentation of topology in like the first courses and in textbooks. So um, in MathLib, uh, where, uh, there is an extensive use of filters in topology, which uh, people like usually encounter at some point also in, in standard mathematics, but, but, but usually this is not the way that topology is taught in the first place. And yeah, so uh, filters were introduced by Bofaki, uh, and they were uh, introduced precisely to formalize topology, even though on paper and not with a proof assistant. And um, uh, I mean, like, I will just recall a filter on a set X is a collection of subsets F su such that like the whole, like the, the whole set is an element. So like we're basically asking for the filter to be non-empty. Uh, that is uh, like for which um, 
uh, it, it is upward closed. So like if a set is in the filter, any bigger set is also in the filter. And, uh, and uh, uh, the intersection of any two sets in the filter is also in the filter. And uh, uh, the, standard the standard example we want to keep in mind when uh, um, like dealing with filters in topology is that of uh, the open neighbor, the, sorry, of the neighborhoods, not, not open, like the general neighborhoods of, of a point. Um, and uh, so, um, and like the reason, like the main reason, well, the first reason why we introduce filters to formalize topology is that filters allow us, allow us to give a definition of, of convergence, which is neat and uh, uh, very general. So we can talk, if we have a map between two topological spaces, we can talk about convergence of this map uh, to a filter G in the codomain uh, space along a filter F in the domain space. Um, so that like we say that a function converges to a filter G along F if uh, for every uh, element of G, the pre-image of this element will be in F. And uh, uh, yeah, this is precisely how uh, we define continuity at a point uh, in, um, in, uh, in MathLib. So we can define continuous at, and we can also with like variations of uh, the neighborhoods, uh, the filter of neighborhoods, we can define uh, continuous within at and continuous, and then using continuous within at, which is continuity at a point within a set, we can divide continuity on a set. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically, uh, if one wants to do uh, topology in lean, in math in general, uh, they need to learn the basic facts about filters. So this like is uh, usually the starting point when one starts doing topology in the, um, in the, um, uh, in math. I mean, there is a very nice, uh, uh, explanation of how to deal with uh, uh, filters in math by Patrick Marceau, who, um, who gave a talk at, at the LFT. I uh, remember the, the list of like at the seminar in 2020. I will have like this link at the end of the slides. Um, and uh, yeah, so we want to talk about uh, homomorphisms, as, homomorphisms as well, although uh, they're pretty standard too. So they're just what one would imagine. We have uh, a structure with, um, uh, that, that has as the data uh, two functions um, on, on our topological spaces, uh, like uh, in opposite directions. And uh, we ask that, our, that they are the inverse of one another. And we ask that they are both continuous. Uh, but like note that uh, after this, uh, the requirement of continuity, there is this dot tactic interactive continuity and this like uh, relates to this tactic which is indeed called continuity uh which is defined um in uh, in um, in topology matlib precisely to uh prove automatically that certain easy statements of continuity uh are true so um so yeah like it, it gives some automation in in in, in in topology, and this uh, is this is uh, good because, like, um, uh, like when one wants to do mathematics in lean as if it were like normal re research mathematics, they wouldn't like check uh, all single continuity statements that they make, and uh, this continuity tactic is uh, is uh, hand is handy to allow people to. Just like carry out some proofs automatically that are uh, like easy, and yeah, not check out all the details. Um, so and okay, and like the last thing I think in uh, general points of topology that I want to uh, talk about before fiber bundles and vector bundles is that. Is that of um, is the concept of local homeomorphisms, and this is actually, I mean, despite uh, being like, mm, I mean, uh, not not that not that hard of a concept in standard mathematics, uh, it is 
not as easy easily um, uh, done in lean as like uh, standard homeomorphisms. Um, so they were, they were defined by Sebastian Guizel, um, and they are quite uh, quite used in Mathlib at the moment, especially in geometry and the parts of topology that uh, have applications in geometry. Um, and uh, yeah, the, like the, the, the reason why uh, they are slightly, well, slightly, they are considerably harder than uh, homeomorphisms uh, is that like the, the implementation of local homeomorphism in Mathlib was not uh, obvious. There were many uh, possible design choices. And as always, when there are many paths that one can take, there were pros and cons of for every path. And uh, uh, it was not that straightforward to decide uh, what to do. So um, like the, the way they are implemented uh, in Mathlib at the moment is that we have, uh, again, two um, functions uh, in opposite direction that are defined globally. Um, so uh, is, is, is Kevin, I saw you, you uh, like uh, took out the new, is there? No, okay, whatever. Uh what happened? Sorry. Uh, no, nothing. I heard. Sorry, I heard uh, some noise, and I thought like uh, you took off the mute to tell me something. I was. Yeah. I was thinking that was what the noise okay, was. Okay, okay, okay. No worries. Sorry. This this definition. There's some issue with equality with this definition now, right? Yes. Yes. I will talk about this uh, in a moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, I was that's just. What, that's what the noise was. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. 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 For sure. I will. I will. I will mention this in a moment. I will just like quickly finish go over the code. Um, so going over the code. So, okay, so we have, and we have two sets, uh, source and target in the domain and the codomain, which are the sets uh, that we uh, care about uh, for, the, for our local homomorphism. And then like the rest of the, of the fields of this structure are, are alike. I mean, what one would guess probably. So they, I mean, you ask that um, the, um, the source gets mapped into the target, that the target gets mapped to the, in the source by the inverse map, and uh, the, the functions are the inverse of one another, uh, and they, they are continuous on the sets. And the, these and the, are redundant, some of these statements, right? Um, are they? Don't you, doesn't this say, no, oh, no, I, no, 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 sorry. No, no, no. The, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm an idiot. Is open source just says the source is open, not the function is open, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 no. This is perfect. Exactly. Okay. Which does not follow from continuous. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. And um, yeah, so like the, uh, I want to mention why uh, this choice was made. So this, this thing about defining global functions was made because indeed it is a kind of weird choice. So, um, uh, there were three basically ideas when formalizing local homomorphisms that uh, made sense. So, like the first was to just use homomorphisms of subtypes, which is what, like, is the most is the closest thing to what usually does in mathematics, like in standard mathematics, and like the first thing that would probably come to one's mind if they want to formalize local homomorphisms. Um, like another possibility is to um, have pairs of functions taking values in uh, option alpha and option beta, which are a type, which like option alpha is a type, the, which is basically alpha plus a term non uh, uh, that allows to do like, I, I mean, it's, 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 I think it's, it's, it's there precisely to do this kind of thing. So like we, we, we would put, we would set the functions equal to none when where the local homomorphism is not defined. And finally, we have the option that was chosen. So like pairs of function defined everywhere on alpha and beta and keeping the source and targets as additional, da additional data. Um, so yeah, the pros and the cons of this, of this path, were, oh, sorry, of these uh, possibilities were that well, I mean, for the subtypes or for the homomorphism of the subtypes, 
I mean, this was like, again, the obvious choice, but working with stop times in Lean is, is hard. It's like many things that like many problems with definitional equalities and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, I think uh, someone even tried to start like that, but then uh, they decided to uh, go for another, uh, like to choose something else. The, like the second, um, the second one, so like there's a function taking values in option alpha and op option beta. Uh, th these were like very neat at the level of, uh, of uh, types, so like for local equivalences, the step before local homomorphism, but then it's hard to talk about continuity and smoothness because like, I mean, obviously how, I mean, it's not obvious how to do, how to deal with uh, the term non and uh, how to extend the definition of continuity to option alpha and option beta. I mean, there were some workarounds, but they were just not that natural. And uh, yeah, this uh, this third path as, as uh, as like a con has indeed what uh, I mean the main con would be uh, what Kevin said so uh, there is a problem of equality so uh, I mean you want to you want to local homomorphisms to be equal when they are equal in the sets that you care about but right now uh, you can have two different ones that just differ outside of the surf of the target but they're equal in, in the source of and, and, and in the target and uh, and yeah, like it's it's not the the concept you want, but uh, like the workaround around uh, like the workaround for this was uh, as as uh, you probably would imagine to redefine equality for um, for uh, local homomorphisms and local equivalences. Local equivalences. So um, we have uh, like we have an equivalence of uh, of uh, local homomorphisms and uh, statements that need two local homomorphisms uh, to be equal, or I mean, when you want to state that two local homomorphisms are equal, you just use this other implementation of equality. Uh, and yeah, clearly this was uh, a kind of uh, uh, a pain because one would, like one has to rewrite so many things about equality for this new uh, equivalence of local homomorphisms uh, and local equivalences and this kind of stuff. But uh, it still is the, I mean, it's true that one does not uh, need to state that two local homomorphisms are equal many times. Well, I mean, I, I used local homomorphisms a lot in geometry and it basically never happened. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, th then you can work with it when it happens. And, and also like the other con is that you like you need to uh, define how this function, so like to fun and in fun from alpha to beta and from beta to alpha, you need to define uh, their values also outside of the uh, sets you're interested in. And most like a lot of times this is not a problem, like there are like obvious extensions, but sometimes it is a problem. Like this is actually, I mean, like in practice, working with local homomorphisms, this is actually the most annoying thing. In this uh, with this implementation that like I found so like sometimes there is a, a clear way to define something on I mean you you know how to define something on your source but outside of a source you just have to like ask that the uh, target sorry that the codomain is inhabited and then uh, define uh, things with uh, an if statement so it's kind of annoying but it happens enough little times that uh i mean like in in the 90 percent of cases like this implementation of local homomorphisms works like quite smoothly um so yeah and the last the last thing before vector bundles that i want to introduce is uh fiber bundles which were also defined by sebastian Guzel. um and yeah, so like in order to define fiber bundles, you need to define trivializations first. Uh, and you do this by extending the local homomorphisms that we just saw. So you add uh, this field based set, which it, it is indeed a bit like here, I think it's kind of a bit redundant, but it, it uh, makes uh, working with, uh, with um, trivialization defined this way uh, easy, easier. 
and uh, and yeah, you like you write down how this base set relates with uh, the source and the target, and finally you ask for what you really want so that uh, the the map underlying the trivialization respects the fiber. So it's the last line uh, project pro project to fun. So uh, that the uh, like first uh, the first factor of the uh, like image of a point is equal to the projection at a point like this. Basically that the map respects the fibers. Uh, and then once you have a, a definition of a trivialization, you would define uh, the fiber bundle just as a property, which is interesting uh, thing. So um, um, like you just define it uh, like, I mean, normally as you would expect in mathematics, but not as a structure, not as a class. You just define it as a property. And uh, the reason why uh, this is so, I mean, this like confused me at the beginning. I would have like if if I would if I uh, defined it myself, I would have probably ma made it into a class. But uh, yeah, like apparently uh, there there is actually not. I mean, at, up to now there has not been the need of of having of using type class inference with um, fiber bundles and defining defining it this way is like more lightweight like than using structures and and yes and yeah so finally we can move to vector bundles um so like just to fix the notation and uh, uh recall the definition since i'm gonna talk about vector bundles for a, for a bit i will mention the standard definition of vector bundles in mathematics so we have like as, as, as the data of a vector bundle will have two topological spaces, Z and B, we have a continuous rejection between them. So I, that goes from Z to B. We have a structure vector space on each fiber of the projection pi, and we have a model vector space B. And then the properties that we want our data to satisfy are that, um, for any uh, point in the in the base space, there exists a neighborhood that trivial that trivializes the the uh, vector bundle. So for which uh, the pre-image of a projection of the neighborhood is uh, uh, homeomorphic, for, like through a map phi to the neighborhood that times the model vector space. Uh, we want that this map. Uh, respects the fiber, and we want that it is. Uh, we want it to be a linear um, isomorphism at each fiber. So, um, so like uh, formalizing vector bundles is uh, another of the another thing which is actually not at all straightforward. And again, not because it is like a super hard concept or anything like that, but, but because there are like many possible ways that one can formalize vector bundles. And at the beginning, it's not clear at all what uh, is the right way um, to do that. I mean, there are actually way, there's way more freedom of choice here uh, than for fiber bundles because like you have the structure of vector spaces and, and that you have more data in general. So uh, the first thing that uh, comes to one mind when uh, formalizing vector bundles is to just like reproduce the definition literally. Uh, so you start with two vector spaces, so sorry, two topological spaces, uh, uh, B and Z, a uh, projection uh, uh, map between them, a projection from Z to B. Uh, and to put a topology, sorry, to put a vector space on the on the fibers, uh, you like you can just quantify uh, in the in the um, like request for instances on the on the um, on the fibers. You just quantify over the um, the base space, and you ask for for like for we ask that there is a, a vector space type structure on each on each pre image. Uh, at a point, so like we right now we're we're uh, considering the fibers to be the like the set like to be set. So we 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 like our fibers are the like set per image at each point of the of the base space 
through the math approach. Um, and, uh, and then like from this given a model uh, fiber, which is also a, a vector space F, um, we can define trivialization in, in a standard way. But the problem with this implementation is indeed that we are like, we are using this version of the fibers, which is um, like a set uh, and is uh, annoying to work this way. Because like, for example, in the case of, um, of the tangent bundle, uh, at the moment when uh, vector bundles had to be formalized, uh, the total space was defined to be uh, the, um, the base space times the model vector space. And then like one would put a topology and a manifold structure on it in an appropriate way, but just like the underlying type was um, uh, the base space time, the model vector space. And uh, if one used this uh, formalization for vector bundles, the, um, the pre image at each point, uh, um, like the, the, the fibers, as in like the pre image at each point of the projection, would have not been definitionally equal uh, to the tangent space. At each point, which was defined, which was actually defined to be E, so it was definitionally equal to E, um, and and these two are not definitionally equal. One is is a set in the product B times E, and the other is just like the type E, and and like at this point, one would have had like two like two two versions of the fiber, and would have had to uh, deal with the uh, uh, transferring structures between the two versions. So like. One would have a vector space structure on E, but like they would have to transfer the vector space structure also on the set prod, prod uh, minus one X. And uh, uh, I mean, it was not clear how to deal with this kind of things. I mean, it, it is doable. It is like you just define a canonical kind of uh, equivalence uh, between the two types and work with equivalence, but it just becomes very cumbersome in the in the code to just like have equivalent like an equivalence all the time that you need to carry around, uh, and also like this would have not been a problem just for the um, uh, tangent uh, bundle, but like for like basically every vector bundle because like also vector bundles whose underlying type would have whose underlying type where um, sigma type would have had the same problem, and like the other mm, vector bundles whose underlying type also uh, where a product would have had this, this uh, problem. And we like, and we expected basically, uh, well, I and like we, I mean, we also with uh, Sebastian uh, Guezal, we expected like most vector bundles to be implemented through Sigma types. So uh, this would have been like, like that all the time. And uh, uh, the solution to this problem was actually to like acknowledge that most vector bundles if not all vector bundles would could and actually yeah. would be, have been implemented through sigma types and to like impose like the super strong constraint on vector bundles to have a sigma type as um, as the underlying type. So just just like briefly, I, I I recall what a sigma type is. So like sigma types are dependent types that are like products, but the second factor uh, depends, like the type of the second factor depends on the first factor. So, so like uh, the same way that like pi, pi types are for functions. So like the, the value of a mm, pi, like of a function of pi type depends on the, uh, on the, the, yeah, the type of the image depends on the mm, pre-image on the point where you evaluate on the term where uh, at which you evaluate the function, the same thing happens for sigma type. So the second factor depends on the first factor. And uh, um, and yeah, so like, since basically every vector bundle would have been formalized this way, we, imp what we asked for vector bundles to be um, implemented this way. And, uh, um, and this, like in the cases where, like as 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 as, as for the as for the um, tangent bundle, which was a case where actually the underlying type was not a sigma type, like you could you could like you could have rewritten it 
uh, in such a way that the underlying effect was stigmatized. This, like for a product, this is easy because um, the product is like an equivalent type of constant sigma type. So um, in, a, uh, in a case like this, you can just ch change the under, underlying type. And this was this actually is what has been done. So the, the, the underlying type of the uh, tangent bundle has been changed to a constant sigma type. And now the tangent bundle is, is recognized as a, as a vector bundle. Um, so uh, yeah, so like uh, by imposing uh, the constraint that all uh, vector bundles be um, formalized uh, through a sigma type, we're basically uh, changing the language of vector bundles. So like right now, like in, in this, in this uh, implementation with this idea, one will not talk about vector bundles anymore by talking about the total space and uh, uh, the projection, which is the data in the standard definition in mathematics. But now the data becomes this function E from the base space B um, to a universe of types um, that like morally is the function that gives us the fiber at each point. So like E of X is the fiber uh, at the point X of the base space. Um, so, um, so like, yes, we, we, we start with uh, um, uh, like uh, our ring, I mean, semi, semi ring, but whatever, ring base space uh, model fiber and, and our map. And like we ask for instance, like the, the instances you would imagine. So, uh, that like the fiber is a vector space and the total space of the, of the vector bundle uh, as a sigma type of the function E is a topological space. Um, and we get automatically all the data that one usually has in uh, uh, the standard definition of vector bundles. So like the projection is always gonna be uh, sigma dot first. So like the projection onto the first factor uh, of a sigma type. And uh, yeah, also the, as I mentioned like two seconds ago, the total space will be the, the sigma type relative to the function E. So uh, you don't like your, your, like that's not anymore part of the initial data. That's, that's like the total space and the projection are automatically defined once you give the data of the function E. Um, and like it is, I mean, one, one could, uh, notice that actually we did not solve the problem that we pro like this way did not solve the problem that I promised, uh, would have been solved. So it's still not the case that the projection that the, uh, pre images of the, um, of the points of, on the base space through, uh, the projections are not definitionally equal to the fibers, which are now like defined to be E of X. So like the, the values of the map E, but uh, like this is actually not anymore a problem because like uh, with this uh, constraint on, on, on the form of vector bundles, uh, there is a very canonical way to talk about the fiber, which is using the map E. And one actually uh, doesn't need uh, anymore to use the pre-image of a projection. So we completely forget the set, uh, the set uh, implementation of the pre-images of the fibers that we mentioned before. And we only work with this. I mean, we can do this like now because like we have a strong constraint. So like the vector bundles will always be implemented this way and the fibers will always be of this type. Whereas in the previous case, we still needed the fibers to, like we still needed to have fibers as, as sets because like the underlying, we didn't have any hypothesis on the underlying type. So like we couldn't, we couldn't, we didn't have any other canonical way to talk about the fibers. And, uh, uh, and yeah, so like this actually turns out to uh, work um, quite well. And uh, uh, it is, straightforward that like defining uh, vector bundles uh, this way. So like, uh, um, like just by extending trivialization of, of, uh, of fiber bundles uh, to trivialization of vector bundles by requiring that 
their leading fighter wise um and and imposing like uh standard conditions on the on the on the total space that will be uh, at this point traced through the map so like with with all of this is straightforward to prove that a topological vector bundle is a topological fiber bundles just because we extended the trivializations and that um the trivial fiber the trivial the vector bundles is a topological vector bundle so just like we trivial in the product of the very space and the um, model vector space. So, uh, so like the next thing uh, regarding vector bundles that I want to talk about is uh, sections, which sections of vector bundles, which is another topic that uh, is actually not that easy to uh, implement uh, in in uh, in Lean. Um, and like the reason, uh, the reason why it is not that easy is again because like there is quite a, uh, there is like some well, not that much freedom of choice, but there is some freedom of choice in the implementation of sections. Um, so, given a vector bundle relative to the map E, which we introduced before, so like map the fiber map, let's say, um, there are two like there are mainly two possible implementations. Uh, the first is like. Well, I forgot it now, whatever. Like the first is um, uh, like what one would uh, define classically, like as in, in standard math. So uh, like a section is just like a categorical section. So like the, the inverse of uh, the morphism, uh, the, the right inverse of the morphism. So like in this case, the right inverse of uh, uh, the projection sigma first. Um, or, one can use a uh, uh, pi, like the pi type relative to the function e. So like a function that at each point has value in e of x. Uh, both implementations have advantages and disadvantages as everything, like everything we presented, like I presented up to now for the other uh, objects we discussed. So like the advantage of a classic approach is that it behaves well in topology. So um, like the uh, like right inverses of the projection, uh, since like the projection like sigma first is, is a map from uh, the total space or the sigma type uh, to um, the base space, this will be from the base space to the total space. And we have a topological structure on, we have a topological space structure on the total space. So it is, it will be handy uh, to talk about continuity of a section, for example, uh, but it's not, it does not behave well algebraically because uh, clearly we don't have any uh, algebraic structure on the total space. We have stru algebraic structure on the fibers, but not on the total space, there is not a sensible way uh, to put an algebraic structure on the total space and, uh, um, this like makes it hard. Like if we implement sections this way, it will be hard to um, add to sections or to check if the section vanishes at a point because like we don't have like zeros um, in the total space. We have them at each at each fiber. Um, and like the opposite is true for sections um, which are implemented in terms of pi types. So like sections implemented in terms of type of pi types will behave very well algebraically but not topologically. So like now I have that the value at each point is in a vector space, which is so like it's in a it's in a in a fiber which is in the fiber which is the vector space. So I can like sum, subtract, whatever, multiply by a scalar and ask like check if it is zero or not. But like actually I mean, it's even hard, like, I mean, talking about continuity in this case is, is completely impossible. Like there is no, uh, I mean, the, there is not even a type on which we would put topological space structure. I mean, like every, 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 has, every value at each point is, 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 is in a different type. So we don't have a concept of continuity. Um, so like the solution that I use to implement sections uh, was to actually define them both ways and uh, uh, um, write down a canonical equivalence uh, 
between uh, the two types. I know that uh, Kevin Butler doesn't like the word canonical that much, but uh, I mean, it is canonical here. And, uh, um, and then like careful, like, and then like you study, I mean, the, um, you find a smart way to define coercions uh, in such a way that things uh, work well and smoothly. Um, so, okay, like let's take a, a brief look at the code. The code for the first implementation in just like at the, at the moment, just in, in type theory without um, without making any reference to topology and continuity. Uh, I mean, we just have a structure which implements the right inverse of a function. Uh, and then we just use a um, uh, uh, type synonym for the, the pi type. So to not, to, not to like overload um, like uh, type class inference. And uh, um, we and we we well, I mean the the, the definition in case of the pi type is straightforward. Um, and then like we do we do prove that there are there is like a, a natural equivalence between the two. Um, and then we like since we like I mean after some some thinking one realizes that even if you have uh, both of them, you will give priority to one of them, for example, to define, I don't know, uh, vector fields, differential forms, or this kind of things you will want uh, to, to be defined. Uh, you, will, you will want them to be defined as pi types or as right inverses, but like you want to choose one. Uh, you give, like, after some thinking, you, like, you realize that uh, you, you want to give priority to the pi type. So um, we like we want to we want actually to to think section as as members as terms of, of the pi type and use the other uh, implementation just like as uh, uh, just to help us um, in the statements and to help us to discuss the topology the um, to discuss uh, the continuity of sections but 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 like more more as a tool than as a as an actual implementation. And uh, so like uh, you define a coercion from uh, the pi type to the right inverses from the bundle section to, to um, the right the right inverses. And then like the, the like a trick here that kind of uh, uh, like makes things smooth is that you don't define a coercion to functions for bundle sections, but you define it for right inverse. And then like the, the type class inference works like in, in such a way that uh, when you evaluate a term of, of type bundle section, which is just the pi type on a term B, like on a point B in the base space, it will yield a term like a point of the fiber, a term of type EB. But when you, co when you coerce into a function, uh, it will, chain the coercion and it will coerce it into a um, uh, right inverse and then to a function and it will recognize it as a function from B to the total space. And so you can write continuous S for a section S of type uh, bundle section. And, uh, and like, you don't have to carry around the equivalence, which is kind of cumbersome and annoying. And so we kind of get like the best of uh, both implementations. So yeah, this is like the code of what I was saying. So like you have uh, B, a point, and S, uh, the bundle section, and like S as a function will be a function from B to the tool space, and uh, S related to the point will be a, a point of the fiber. And uh, uh, yeah, this trick, um, this trick like allows us to define a continuous version of a uh, bundle section. Uh, just like I mean, the, the I mean, we we have this uh, field that continues to, to fun, which is just continuous to fun. We don't have to use the equivalence, uh, and uh, um, and then like we define a type synonym uh, for the sections of vector bundles that also keeps track of the of the ring R and of the model uh, vector space F. Uh, this like I mean. 
the usual thing when you, you do uh, in Lean when you want to keep track of of uh, of uh, parameters. And uh, and yes, and like and then, I mean, things kind of work smoothly this way. So like you 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 don't have a very uh, heavy notation, and still you're able to work with sections um, like kind of normally. And yes, I mean, just to conclude, I uh, will mention like some, some, like, I mean, basically what is available on like for vector bundles now. So like we have some constructions. Uh, well, I mean, I'd say also for vector bundles, oh, vector bundles, like, I mean, for starting from vector bundles, we can construct other vector bundles, but also we can construct vector bundles with specific uh, constructions. Uh, so, like the the first one that was implemented was this topological vector bundle core, which is like the standard thing that you usually do in mathematics when uh, you want to construct a vector bundles. Um, like when you know how uh, how to glue like trivial patches together, so you have like trivial patches and like you have functions uh, that tell you how this like the fibers of these trivial patches glue. Uh, and uh, you are able, like this, this function are linear uh, fiber wise, and like you are able to glue together the patches into a, into a, um, into a vector bundle. Uh, and yes, this is quite useful. Like for example, this is what uh, it is used then to uh, um, formalize the tangent bundle. I mean, it was formalized before vector bundles, but then it has it is it has been rewritten with this construction, and then um, and then like you have this topological vector pre bundle, which is uh, the construction you use when you don't have a topology on the on the total space yet, uh, but you want to define a topology in such a way that uh, the resulting space will be a vector bundle. So, um, so yes, like you have basically all the data as for a vector, like as for uh, a, a standard vector bundle, except all the data that depends on the topology of the of the total space, and then you are able to complete it in such a way that it becomes a vector bundle. Um, and then, like we have that the pullback of uh, a vector bundle um, is a vector bundle. And note that, like in the formalism of vector bundles that we're using in uh, in uh, MathLib right now, the pullback um, the, the pullback vector bundles is the vector bundle associated to the map to the map E composed with F. So it's kind of like uh, elegant and uh, um, and yes. So um, like. It is clear that with for, with these formalisms, you can define like like most of strand standard construction that usually one uh, does on vector bundles like uh, other like the direct direct sums, the the dual, the whatever like the uh, like the homomorphism at each fiber of the of the vector bundles and these kind of things. Uh, and this is like this. I mean, I already like I have on my local machine the the direct sum, but uh, I mean it's like a mess, and I still didn't have the time to clean it and and um, are it. Uh, but like basically all the construction you would do them uh, in a similar way to 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 the pullback. So like you make use of this uh, topological vector pre bundle. And uh, uh, and then like you you just like build it uh, like you define the total space you define like you, you are you are already given the map the maps uh, um, that the vector bundles are relative to so like for example in the case of of a pool that was like just e composed with F in the case of the sum will be just like the map which uh, it like goes into like the sum of the maps. And, and this kind of things, and when you put a, a topology from the, like you, you, there is an obvious way to define the trivialization and then you define the topology from the trivializations. And, uh, and yes, 
Um, so this like is the end, except that I have a couple of slides more uh, as to like what uh, people can uh, do now. Like so, like this is this is for actually who is not that familiar. This slide is for who is not that familiar, for whom or who whatever is not that familiar with uh, uh, topology in Lean yet, and like nice resources for that are, well, the, the, the standard topology page on the Lean Prover community page, the, the Lean Prover community website. And it's, it, it is nice to like um, listen to the talk by uh, Patrick Masso that I mentioned before, okay, at the LFDCM 2020. And for this talk in particular, uh, more than the talk, it is nice to do the exercises. Like the 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 talk came with uh, some exercises at the end, and like those are pretty good to get used to the formalism of filters in MathLib and uh, and like of, on on like how uh, topology is done uh, with MathLib. And uh, like if people already know uh, uh, topology like in MathLib, I mean. Uh, and I want to like, try something with vector bundles to get to 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 like play a bit and get used to them. Uh, like a nice, I think, doable exercise at the moment. I mean, there's still a couple of pairs which have not been uh, uh, merged yet, but that should be merged soon before doing this exercise. But yeah, it should be a matter of, of little time. Um, like one one kind of straightforward exercise is like to prove that a vector bundle is trivial. Even only if it has n uh, like n linearly independent non vanishing sections where n is the rank. Yeah, I wrote a dimensional, but I meant rank. Sorry. Uh, it's the rank of a vector bundle. And uh, um, and then uh, to prove that the restriction of the vector bundle to subspace is uh, is a vector bundle. This should be should be not not too difficult. And yes, this is the end of the talk. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. I'm just stopping recording.